let's accept, right, that at some point, about 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing. OK, literally nothing, except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe, OK? Suddenly, that exploded. And in a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together, one of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? Um, probably nothing for quite a bit. OK. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing a problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. You see, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around. And if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. <laughs> OK, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Yeah, something, something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way, um, penicillin Go on. happened. Go on. It was, the bread was sat there, it goes off. Mm. Air would have uh, created the greenness. <laughs> oh, God! This sounds like the Bible! <laughs> that, is, that is like the Bible! Air created the greenness! That's amazing! Carry on, <laughs> carry on, because I want to... I'm, I'm, in, I'm learning here, I'm learning. And once you've got something, that yeah. leads to otherness. <laughs> oh, this is like... This is like a monk <laughs> that sat down. Oh, We're all sat cross-legged listening to the yeah, wise old man. I know. What are you going to do? I'm going to write uh, a thing of how everything was created. But hang on, carry really? on, because I'm interested. Yeah. So well, where are we? So, so we've got... So we've got... We had greenness and now we've got so something. So the air created the greenness and then what is it? Then we have... What was Just it? otherness Other, from otherness. the greenness. Right. Because once other, you've got... Once from, you've other, got from greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, others come. Yes. <laughs> the air created the greenness, <laughs> then you've got otherness. If you create something, others will come. Build it and they will but come. But it's, sort of, it's sort of right. In the, yeah, no, 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 on the earth at this moment in time, what would I see? Um, not that much. You wouldn't want to stay. But there's greenness. Little little patches little of greenness. Little patches of greenness, OK. A little bit of rubble knocking around. <laughs> a bit of rubble. There was a bit of rubble, OK. Um, We've still got a long way to go. We want to get to life, don't we? OK, so let's, let's, get, so, let's skip forward so, then, Carl, so, to life. So everything was right, OK? It was the right distance from the sun. OK. Yeah, but even if it, it wasn't, way, we'd, it, we'd, have, we'd have we'd still been creating. No, we wouldn't. We would, have. Something no, we would wouldn't have done. Have. No, we wouldn't have. I want to hear Carl's opinion on this, Rick. I'm not interested in facts. I want to hear Carl's so opinion. So, are you saying um, if if the atmosphere right around the Earth wasn't about 99% uh, percent nitrogen and oxygen with 1% other gases, we'd have still had something else? Something would have been around. I'm not saying it might, it might it might be better than us, it might be worse than us. What would it look like? Um, well, it's, it's hard to say, because they say, don't they, that it's the conditions that mould you into the shape and colour... Sure. Mm. ..and, uh, you know, everything else that makes you the person that you are. OK, let's take Pluto. We know that's the farthest away. So it's, it is dark and cold there. Right. What? How do you imagine the creatures that will develop there will Big look Big eyes like? and airy. <laughs> How did they evolve, though? Because we evolved... Just... Hang on. You yeah. always say yeah. animals change to suit the conditions. I'd have thought, if, if it's dark, you don't need eyes, because things that live underground or at the bottom of the ocean, they don't, they don't have um, eyes or, uh, or, or colour, because there's no point. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, are we saying we're living inside Pluto or on the top of it like we're doing? Why would we live inside Pluto? Well, no, I wouldn't, it, it, I wouldn't. it couldn't support life, full stop. But, but um, this um, is one of the most ridiculous conversations we've ever had. He's I seriously considered everything we based on, life on life. a ridiculously false premise. No, Carl, we're this... saying now right. that the world's overcrowded. Right. There's too many people on it. Right. We're running out of houses. People are living in basements. Now, that's only one step away from, from being molish. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're already going on the ground because we're running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Come like, on. Keep it like, on. Let him. I want to hear his point. Is yeah, that yeah. like being Amish? <laughs> so so what are you saying? Amish people. They don't acknowledge the the crust of the earth. So you're saying within five years there's going to be sort of mole-like people living in basement flats well, with well, no eyes. But hold on, though. In your in your in, according to you, the lower they go, the colder and darker they go, the hairier and better eyes they'll have. Uh, well, it depends. No, I was only saying they'd have better eyes if they're on a dark planet where they're outside, so they still have to look out for things that they could trip over. If we're going, if we're going, if we're going underground, they're, around, they're so concerned. <laughs> That's the whole evolution. Is about what we don't want to trip over. I don't want to graze my knees. You've got knees. They got them on Earth. Coincidence, isn't it? Hub, hub. Do you recycle? I don't really do all that. I don't separate stuff. I don't sort of put there's the cans, there's there's the paper. You don't do that. You just throw it away, do you? Yeah. Oh, that, that's that, bad. That and they can't me. do anything with that. That annoys me when you're just putting it in landfill, mate. Come on. Yeah. But I haven't got all the bins. There isn't enough room for all the bins. Yeah, we have to do. You've got yeah, a recycle box you stick outside. Yeah. What are you on about? Recycle box. Yeah. I haven't got one. Well, no, you got you got to ask for one. I tried to get rid of a um, a sofa. Right. I was getting a new sofa. Add the old one. You try and get rid of one of them. It's murder. Right. I called up the council, said I want to get rid of it. They said we're not coming round there till Friday. It was like a Monday. I said it's in the way. So I put it outside. I said you put it outside, you'll get a fine. I said yeah, but you don't know where I'm going to put it outside. <laughs> yeah. So it's not outside my house. No. So they said well, you do that. We've got your number. What's the sofa like? It's a beige one. Well, if we see that. <laughs> so um, they said if you if you want to pay to have it collected, we can come and get it tomorrow. Thirty quid. I said I'm not paying for it. It's madness. Yeah. So hung up, annoyed. Call me dad up. He said, oh, I saw this thing on the telly saying that you can donate your furniture to people who haven't got a sofa. Look it up on the internet. So I looked it up, there's a firm that does it. Right. Uh, right, cheeky sods. Called them up, said, I've got this sofa here, I want to donate it to someone who hasn't got a sofa. He said, uh, oh, what's it like, is it in good condition? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Well, why are you getting rid of it? <laughs> I said, because we've moved into a bit of a bigger place and the sofa looks daft in the corner. It's, it's too small, so I'm getting a bigger one. There's nothing wrong with it. How big is it? How many people does it sit? So it depends how big you are. You can sit two people on it, but it's not the comfiest. But it's, it's in good condition. It's none of your nonsense-like stuff. It was expensive right. when I bought it. He said, right. He said, uh, is it safe? So I said, what do you mean? He said, is it fag-proof? So I said, I don't smoke. He said, well, go and get the, um, lift the thing up. He's got me running around looking at my sofa <laughs> and I, I'm giving it away. I had to lift it up, it had a picture of a fag on it. I said, yeah, it's got a picture of a fag on it. And, uh, could, I, could I just, um, point out, uh, fag is a slang for cigarette. When he says, is it fag-proof, he's not gonna open the cushion and someone's go, you, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> so, I should explain that straight away. <laughs> so anyway, it turned out it was fag-proof. They came and picked it up, took it away, uh, that was that. <laughs> but look at the hassle. Look at the hassle it takes to get rid of something. And then they say to you, do not be dumping stuff on the street. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that thing of having to wait for certain days of the week and you can't always keep hold of something for yeah. a certain day of the week because it's big. A mattress is a, it's one of them things you can't get sort of rid of. Or you can't stick it somewhere because no. it's in the way. It's a big, clumpy bit of furniture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's not a bit of furniture, really, a mattress, but I know what you mean. Well, it's a, a, a new sideboard. Yeah, don't, don't, don't lean on it. It's a bit, it's a bit spongy. Uh, what do you keep in it? We can't keep anything in it. It's just full of springs and stuff. <laughs> no, but you know what really I mean? It's a piece of furniture, to be honest. Well, it's part it should of... be on a bed, to be honest. <laughs> it's part of a furniture bit, isn't it? Did I tell you that time when... I don't think you could even ever count a mattress as a piece of furniture. <laughs> of course you can. It's functional. And where do you stop? Is a pillow a piece of furniture? <laughs> is is a, it... A, a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice bit of furniture you're wearing. They're me trousers. <laughs> They're furniture if you pop them up against a wall. <laughs> Did I tell you that time when we first bought a flat? Go on. We bought a flat in Manchester, right? And yeah. You, you know, when you first buy a place, it's expensive, isn't it? And it's a big bit of furniture, a flat, isn't it? So, you know, we bought a sofa, we got a table. Mm. Sorry, you don't mean you bought a sofa, you ended up with a table. No, no. Bought, no you bought, bought a sofa, sofa and a table. Yeah. Table. Yeah. Now, I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know. Suzanne sent you to buy a sofa, you yeah. came out with a table. Now, back then, I wasn't as wise as I am now. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Oh, what was he? Some snot in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Can I just apologise to any slot in a jar that's listening and was offended by that comment? All right. 